Okay, please uh, grab a seat um, and we'll get started. Uh, we apologize for the slight delay, but just gave you more time to look at the exhibition. We planned it. No, not really. <laughs> So welcome to the William H. Hannon Library. I'm Chris Brancolini, Dean of the Library. Today we gather to celebrate the opening for the Archives and Special Collections Summer Exhibition From Their Perspective 7, Art Posters for a Brighter Future. In the Hannon Library, our exhibition gallery is a place of learning, imagination, and endless possibilities. Every year since 2013, we have invited our LMU student employees from across all departments of the library to participate in curating the summer exhibition in archives and special collections. Students have opportunities to explore rare materials housed inside the department's collections, learn about various collections and interesting topics, and together create an exhibition that highlights our unique collections through the lens of our students' experiences and perspectives. Hence, we call our exhibition From Their Perspective. And as the title seven would indicate, this is the seventh exhibition in our annual series. This year, we are excited to feature our students' selections of art posters created by Mr. John August Swanson, a wonderful artist and beloved friend of LMU and the William H. Hannon Library. Thank you, Mr. Swanson, for your generous gift of your magnific magnificent art posters and other works to the William H. Hannon Library. And thank you for being one of our honored speakers today. We are thrilled, beyond thrilled, to have you here. I would also like to thank the library student supervisors, many of whom are here today, for encouraging and supporting our student workers to participate in this exhibition. I am grateful and proud of the student curators. Their personal stories and thoughtful responses to the art posters are insightful, creative, and moving. This summer exhibition is a celebration of Mr. Swanson's artwork as well as a celebration of our student library workers. I hope that you all have a chance to spend more time with our fantastic exhibition. I know that I saw many of you in the gallery, but please feel free to come back again and again throughout the summer. It is both beautiful and thought-provoking. It is a call to action. I'd like to introduce the moderator of this event, Rachel Wen Pelutsian from the Department of Archives and Special Collections. She is where she is the instruction librarian. And also I would like to personally thank Rachel for all of the hard work that she did with our student curators and the inspiration that she brought to the project. She led the exhibition curation and worked closely with our students and library staff to create this summer exhibition. Rachel will now introduce today's event. So Rachel, please come to the podium. Thank you, Chris. Salutations, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Wen Pelutsian. It's such a pleasure to have everyone come together to celebrate this year's summer exhibition from the Perspective 7, Art Posters for a Brighter Future. We are honored to be with you today, among us, our LMU students and alumni, um, friends and guests of the local community, library staff and student supervisors, also LMU faculty and staff. And of a special note, Mr. John Ox Swanson, the artist who has created the art posters that are being featured in this exhibition. As the lead curator and organizer, I would like to share with you the origin of this summer exhibition. So about one year ago, on a you know, very warm summer day, it was very memorable for me. Cindy Beck, uh, head of uh, Archives and Special Collections, returned from one of her many donor visits, elated, and showed us a treasure box of colorful, intriguing posters. Mr. John X. Swanson has gifted a uh, collection of his art posters to the Department of Archives and Special Collections. And 
there they were, right in front of us, hot off the press, so to speak. <laughs> So as my colleagues and I marvel over the beautiful posters and Cynthia said in her brilliant way, oh, these will make a wonderful summer exhibition. <laughs> we all agree instantly and um, there was. So the exhibition was set in motion. I would like to add that besides the art posters, um, Mr. John X. Swanson has donated artworks to uh, the William H. Allen Library and uh, in addition to the posters that are on display in the exhibit, we have many more posters. And we also house a collection of his signature artwork, including uh, limited edition serigraphs and giclee prints. With visually stunning art images and direct messages on social justice issues, Mr. John August Swanson's posters are perfect for the summer exhibit. The art posters resonate with the LMU mission on the service of faith and the promotion of justice. They channel an urgency that's both personal and collective, compelling us to work with and for each other to create a better humanity for our local and global communities. The posters also speak to our students, uh, as many of them came forward when I sent out the call for participation, an invitation for them to participate in the exhibit. 18 LMU student library workers uh, answered the call and participated in this year's summer exhibit. So each student um, looked at a range of art posters and then from those, they selected one poster that resonated with them the most and wrote a reflected piece to accompany the poster in the exhibit. 18 students, 18 voices, and 18 posters. Our students' curators came from diverse backgrounds and experiences with different majors of study and they work at different areas of the library. Their personal stories and ideas shine light on the most urgent and important social issues that we face today. The posters alongside students' responses invite us to contemplate on our own beliefs and actions, to respect our differences and find common ground, and to face the crisis of the present and ignite necessary changes for a brighter future. This summer exhibition came from the committed work of many individuals. I would like to thank Library Dean Chris Brancolini and Cynthia Beck for the kind support. I'm deeply grateful for Mr. John August Swanson for his generous gifts and along with his colleagues Andrew and Chris, he has worked tirelessly with us for this event. And I'm very grateful for our library curators and the library supervisors who encouraged them to uh, participate in this exhibit. I would like to especially thank my colleague, Jessica Guadato and our student assistant, Michaela Galeski, for the amazing, gorgeous graphic design for the summer exhibit. <laughs> and many thanks to Carol Raby and also America Negretti. Um, who's one of our speakers today for setting up a beautiful venue with food um, that we will enjoy. And also many thanks to John Jackson for consulting and promoting the event. Thank you everybody for being here today to partake the celebration, reflection, and conversation. Now let me introduce today's speakers. We are delighted to have Mr. John August Swanson joining us with three student curators, America, Greta Negretti, Anthony Podis, and Sylvia Velasquez Cruz. The student curators would first talk about their selected art posters and the experiences of uh, participating in the exhibit. And Mr. John Oak Swanson will share with us his process of making the art posters. And following that, there will be a Q&A conversation uh, between the student curators and um, Mr. Swanson. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the first speaker, America Negretti. <laughs> America um, is a rising senior with a major in marketing, 
She has worked in the library for three years, both in the Department of Reference and Instruction, as well as the Department of Outreach. America was the recipient of the 2017 to 2018 LMU Outstanding Sophomore Employee Award. Please join me to welcome America. Hi, everyone. When selecting this poster, I was taken aback by all of Mr. Swanson's beautiful and vibrant art. I was initially drawn to this poster called Noah by the cool blues and greens that act in contrast with the striking warmth in the center of the poster. I particularly enjoyed the fish <laughs> and how easily their curved bodies blended into the waves, as well as the subtle heart patterns that you can see in the boat. Ultimately, I selected the poster because I love that it calls for us to be responsible human beings for the non-human beings that we share our earth with. The 2015 quote by Pope Francis atop the poster reads, because all creatures are connected, each must be cherished with love and respect. For all of us as living creatures are dependent on each other. This could not be more true. As humans, we have the privilege of being at the top of the food chain. We have the most power and thus the most responsibility to care for the creatures beneath us. This idea has been with me since I was young. When I was smaller, I used to look down at the ground when I was walking to make sure that I wouldn't accidentally step on a snail or worm, which I still do. I also had many conversations with my mom about why we ate animals. Now, many people choose to cut out meat out of their diets due to health reasons. But as a 10-year-old, my curiosity and my questions stemmed from empathy. Although these were small actions to take, they led to a much bigger mindset that I now have about animals and our responsibility towards them. What this responsibility looks like for me can look different to other people. For example, one of the big things I go out of my way to do is to purchase beauty products that have not been tested on animals. However, this does not mean that everyone has to behave this way. Whether we choose to live a vegan lifestyle, drive an eco-friendly car, because our earth is also another creature that we must care for, or simply treat the creatures we encounter with love and respect, all our efforts make a difference. I'm grateful to Mr. Swanson for creating the art that allowed me to share these thoughts with you today. The warm, fiery boat in the center of the poster represents hope for our planet that nurtures us and hope for the creatures that we share our home with. Art truly has the power to impact us and act as a catalyst for change. So I am thrilled that Mr. Swanson chooses to create art around social justice. I also participated as a student curator for last year's summer exhibit, and it was a wonderful experience that I wouldn't have had if I was an, um, a library employee. When I was given the chance to participate again this year, I did not hesitate. It's such a unique opportunity for me as a business student to interact with art and reflect on it and share my thoughts with you. Mr. Swanson's art is incredibly inspiring and I hope you all enjoy looking at the gallery. Thank you. Thank you, America. The next speaker is Anthony Podis. Anthony graduated from LMU this year in the class of 2019. Congratulations. Uh, with a bachelor's degree in film and television production. Anthony had worked in the library for four years in the Department of Collections Management uh, during his study here at LMU. And we are very glad to have Anthony continue working in the library after his graduation as one of the staff members. Welcome, Anthony. I'm just going to get a quick water. Sorry about that. Oh, 
Okay. Hello everyone. I'm just gonna hold it. All right. <laughs> Hello everyone. My name is Anthony Protus. I'm a graduate of the class of 2019 here at LMU. Thank you. I studied film and television production, and I focused mostly on documentaries. So I've been working at the collections department since the spring of my freshman year, and I've participated in this particular event. Uh, for three years now, and uh, I would just like to take this time to thank Rachel and the team at the Archives and Special Collections Department, because these exhibits, they really get better and better every year. They're awesome. I'm so glad to participate in this. So the first time I curated this exhibit, I remember walking into Special Collections and, and putting on those pair of uh, white sterile gloves and I was leafing through the uh, hand-drawn sketches from the film The Graduate, if you guys know from uh, Hal, Hal Pereira, was that year? And that really felt special to me because it was like I was holding a piece of film history in my hands and I just felt so connected to not only film but the library and just the opportunity it gave me. And uh, well, this year's exhibit is a little different. Uh, not only were the students not required to wear the white gloves, but uh, this year we were joined in the presence of the artist himself, Mr. John August Swanson. Hello. Um, so the image in the center of my poster is entitled Family Picnic. It's a crayon sgraffito, which I just learned is a thing. But uh, like many of Mr. Swanson's works, this piece is vibrant and rich with color. But why I selected this piece specifically was because of the emotion, that emotion being a kind of, of blissful nostalgia. So when I saw this poster, it was, it was my last semester of college. Senioritis was setting in, and all I could think about was summer and life after college. Kind of stressful, uh, but this piece had a calming effect as I engaged with a lively group of young people picnicking in the forest, I was literally transported to a different place, and the worries of post-college life seemed to melt away. Accompanying the piece was a story of the annual picnic, where Mr. Swanson's mother and her family and some neighbors would all gather in a flatbed and track up the Sierra Madres. This picnic would coincide with the feast day of St. John the Baptist, June 24th, which is just coming up, and it's like right at the start of summer. Couldn't think of a better time for a picnic. Um, so in fact, the piece was based on a real family photograph of the time, and it's in, illustrated in this piece are Mr. Swanson's very own mother, aunt, uncle, godfather, all when they were just teenagers. So internalizing this poster and the story made me think of a very specific place for me, which is the cabin that my grandfather built up in the Carmel Valley Mountains. It's about five hours north of here near Monterey, where I'm originally from. So my family has spent many summer vacations and celebrations hiking, fishing, and barbecuing up there. And viewing this poster just brought a deluge of memories. Uh, Fourth of July parades, um, my Nana's baked beans, paddle boarding at this lake, and the time my uncle encountered a rattlesnake, and then the first time I tried rattlesnake. <laughs> uh, each morning I remember my Papu, uh, he was always the first one up, and he's usually making fried eggs and bacon for everyone. It's my grandfather. Uh, during, the time, during the day, the cousins would go on adventures and swim and play and eat. And at night, we would make s'mores and sing songs around the fire. At this cabin, I found pure bliss. So what this piece also made me think about was friendship. 
I'm now realizing that friendships are a lot much more difficult to maintain after college. I've had friends are working full time now, friends move away. It's a lot harder now to organize something like the picnic and the poster when many of my friends have different schedules or live in different cities. To me, this poster reiterated the importance and value of family. What I truly love about this poster is that it is much like a photograph in that it portrays a single brief moment in time. Although some of the people in the piece may no longer be with us, the artwork keeps their spirit alive. My papu passed away last year, but each time I go back to the cabin and see the trees and the river and the smiling faces of my cousins, I can't help but think of his spirit and his commitment to our family. And this piece just brought all that to me in that first time I saw it. So thank you. Thank you, Anthony. I don't know if I could handle this. Maybe I'm just going to hold it like you. What a great idea. <laughs> so the third speaker uh, is Sylvia Velasquez Cruz. Sylvia is a rising senior majoring in humanities with double minors in French and art history. She works in the Department of Archives and Special Collections. Sylvia is on the Dean's List, and she is currently the summer curatorial intern at the Museum of Latin American Art through the Getty Multicultural Internship Program. Welcome, Sylvia. Hello, thank you. Um, so I walked into work one day for my shift and I saw this colorful array of posters on the table. Um, I had no idea what they were, but instead of sitting at my desk, I went up to them and just looked at them and stared at them for a while until Rachel approached me and told me that I could pick one <laughs> for the summer exhibit. <laughs> so that was very exciting for me because I had never participated in anything like this and um, uh, having no experience in the exhibit uh, areas, I relied on my museum society class to guide me in what I would say in my caption and how I would choose it. But um, I worried about it a lot more than I needed to, um, but I I really wanted to get a message across because I believe that this poster, even though it's beautiful and vibrant, it really shows something that is sad <laughs> among us right now. We don't come together as a community. We don't think of Mother Earth as something that we should care for and attend to. So the framing of this image really placed her in that position for me because it reminded me of the way the Virgin Mary is framed in a lot of religious artwork. And she is a mother that we care for, attend to, and love. And I believe the Mother Earth is the same as well. Um, so I wanted to choose my words and talking points carefully in order to reflect what I've learned and what has left an impact throughout my experience here at LMU, at the Department of Special Collections, and through my courses. Um, I selected this poster because it was so vibrant. I liked the inclusion of the bees because it resonates with the message America was talking about, that animals are also something we must care for. Um, and particularly the colors um, and the subjects reminded me a lot of my home country because I remember driving around in El Salvador and um, looking at the beautiful graffiti and the beautiful artwork that was in public display. And it was always um, really, really colorful and really reflective of the people who live in these towns. And um, that's what it transported me to. Um, I really love the way he depicted the people um, in harmony with the landscape. And um, not just in harmony, but helping it and being loving towards it. So 
um, it really spoke to me in that sense as well. Um, but I love the message at the bottom by, John, um, by Pope Francis. The earth is a sister with whom we must share, we share our life, and the beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. We breathe her air and receive life from her waters. He personifies the earth and reminds us that it is alive. It is always taking care of us, and we must do the same for it. So thank you for highlighting this um, issue in our society and for doing so with all your other posters and really calling people to come together as a community to cause better change for the world. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. With much admiration and gratitude, I would like to introduce our special guest speaker, Mr. John Augustwanson. Swanson. John Augustwanson Swanson is a local artist who makes his home in Los Angeles, California. Actually, very close to OMU. <laughs> and I think he usually very generously offered a tour to his studio. That's a side note. Uh, Mr. Swanson paints in oil, watercolor, acrylic, and mixed media. Also, he is an independent printmaker of limited edition serigraph, lithographs, etchings, and G-clay prints. When John Augustus Swanson began his artwork in 1968, he was excited to share it with others. When he would show his work, people would share the joy and delight. This surprised him and gave him energy to move forward and understand the creative spirit of God moving us. Every step we take forward connects us with the awe and wonder that the creative spirit opens for us. Mr. Swanson's posters are a bridge to create dialogue, reflection, and to bring people together on social justice issues. They combine lettering based on carved rubber stamps he created while enrolled in Sister Corita Kent's art class in 1969. With older and newer paintings, sketches, and drawings, he combines his art with quotes which have a universal and spiritual edge from recognizable people who clearly articulate the complex facets of the world's problems. These words combine with images greater humanized crisis that words cannot do alone. Mr. Swanson hopes that his posters can raise an awareness about the realities faced by communities across the world, and that viewers spend time with the posters and in doing so find better ways and solutions to solve and heal conflicts. He wishes that his years of working and creating give more opportunities and possibilities to make accessible values of caring, of acting as peacemakers, and of something as simple as listening to those who need to be heard. With that, please join me to give a warm welcome to Mr. John August Swanson. Thank you, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, what, well, I'm, I'm grateful to be here and more grateful to see how uh, people, the students, received my artwork and took them in the way. Uh, it's not so much about uh, great art or anything, but I was trying to be expedient when I did these uh, <laughs> posters. And they were uh, started in 2012 with the begin when uh, there was a... On the, on the ballot, there was a de the death penalty, to de end the death penalty. And so I was doing some smaller uh, works for Emory University, wanted to make a, an, a DVD of my art on, on the Passion of Christ for Lent. And uh, I hadn't really done anything that way, that serious. I had little sketches, so... Then I turned one of the sketch into uh, a poster for the death penalty, a crucifixion. And then uh, again in 2016, I, I went back and reworked that, you know, to try to link, you know, something it, it very uh, iconic to the death penalty that would maybe make people more al alert and awake. 
Uh, so in 2015, let's see, 2014, I began doing them. So it's taken five years uh, to do. Uh, there's about 50 posters uh, now, and uh, and I, w I thought the uh, you know I'm well. I was already in my late 70s. Now I'm 81. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to do anything of value to uh, awake and do something about the earth and about the situations that are, that are very meaningful to me, I must do them now before I can't uh, do any work like this. And because uh, I've always done it on the streets. I mean, I would walk the, all, at all the protests. I'd go to all the rallies and, and um, gatherings. So uh, rather than do that, um, I instead of I started to work more on these posters, and uh, I I'd have to find the right words, as uh, you know I'd find uh, comments or especially uh, things that were issues that were important to me, and then I'd link them with art, and I'd go through uh, some drawings, I'd go through artwork that no one had ever seen. It, like early works that would be from the uh, the, the early four, <laughs> 60s and 70s and 80s. And I went to school with Corita. Corita was a sister at Immaculate Heart College here in Los Angeles, and she was really prophetic uh, uh, artist. And she did artwork uh, uh, with lettering, and that's what I studied with her, lettering and design. It was a night class. But at that time, I was hopeless. I was 30 years old. I, I couldn't figure out what I was going to do. And I was dyslexic. And I don't know, I tried everything, but I'd failed. So the fact that when she said um, trying to uh, do something that would reach people, and before that, I'd never done anything that had reached anybody that, and that, would, that what I had done, no one had ever said, you've done something beautiful. But then I began w in this class, and then people started to respond to it, and it made me real happy because before that I had failed everything. So it was a matter of survival of, of my spirit. Uh, I, I just wanted to talk about the very beginning. Uh, I'm going back. Uh, the very beginning artwork, what he calls scurfito, uh, just to explain it, it's layers of wax crayon and then carving through it. And children do that in, in grade school. And that's how I taught myself to paint. Because what I studied with Corita was lettering. And I would carve alphabets out of rubber erasers and then stamp them out. And so I, I was um, very keen about using uh, lettering. And so that was in my, my uh, abilities. That from from the early uh, or from the late 60s and so that's what that is so it's just carving through wax crayon and that's an early work it's a series called of Noah's Ark this is the piece that uh, Anthony talked about and this is a photo from 1925 1925 all of them are gone they're all my relatives this was in Mexico, in Chihuahua, in the High Sierras. Uh, those who are familiar with that region, it's the northern part of Mexico, and it's part of where the Copper Canyon, the deep, it's much deeper canyon than the Grand Canyon. And I, they're there, and so I, my mom told me the story. She'd like to tell the story of how they went on a picnic on the Feast of St. John the Baptist, that's the, you know, uh, in, in Mexico, the tradition was that the waters are blessed. So if you go in the water, there's a special healing and blessing. And so they would do picnics. And, and I like that idea of the ordinary, everyday life in, with a, combined with the sacred. Uh, so this is the crayons painting, the original one. And then this one was one that be, be, was turned into a um, an, an album, a record album, in 1974. 1973, when I did this painting, this man bought the painting. He was a young man, and he won, and his father had been a great, uh, well, a popular uh, musician named Ross Bagdasarian. 
and oh, see, I did it as a Mexican family. He was Armenian. He thought of it as an Armenian family, and so he wanted to buy the picture, and I was real grateful because, you know, to do a painting and have someone buy it, that was exciting. <laughs> and uh, so he, he uh, decided to make a, a record album for his father who had died, like a, a, memor a memorial of his music. And he wrote the song, but I don't know if any of you are dated that well. You know the song, Come On To My House. Come on to my house, my house, going to give you everything. Uh, anyway, I, what was interesting, the um, Ross Bagdasarian also did the chipmunks. <laughs> Elevated the chipmunks. But what, what I liked most about the, the history, when I was reading the history in the album, was that he was friends with William Soroyan, the great uh, a writer, uh, Armenian American a writer. And so he, and in fact, Ross Bagdasarian, this composer, also was in the play with uh, William Soroyan's play, The Time of Your Life, which won the uh, Pulitzer Prize. Anyway, that's an anecdote. <laughs> but I, I was doing all these uh, artworks before that on hunger, and, I, and then I had this picnic, and I thought, that how could this fit into this idea of hunger? But what I try to do is bring it together as an idea about um, community and people gathering and the idea that uh, there's a quote from on the top about that we could make peace if people would start to gather together and share food together that would where people could no longer be enemies. And also, I put another quote by um, John Vanier, who just died. He was the founder of La Arche, and he uh, developed all these communities working with people that had mental disabilities and physical disabilities living in communities with people that were that didn't have them, but uh, how to take care of each other. And then I, the, the, the best one is Daniel Berrigan. I have the quote from Daniel Berrigan that, um, uh, about bread and breaking bread and sharing it with people, especially that don't have bread. Uh, so so th it, it's, it's a slow process. As I say, I'm a slow guy working. Uh, so that's it, so it took me all these ideas to get to the poster. And uh, th th these drawings, I was very keen about uh, uh, Lewis Hine, who did photos during the turn of the century, the last century. <laughs> and uh, he went to Ellis Island, and he would photograph people. He also went to the uh, mines and to the mills where they had child labor, and his photographs of those uh, of the working conditions for children helped change the laws that were um, uh, that uh, to to uh, control and prevent the child labor in these pl workplaces. So I had these drawings f uh, probably from the uh, er uh, late seventies and early eighties, and then uh, when I decided to do a poster on. Um, immigration, I decided to take the, the, these old drawings and I started painting them. So this just shows you, uh, you know, in how things evolved from something a long time ago, then you, you add more to it. And then this is the poster. This is one of the alphabets that I carved in Carita's class. I called it the seven up because that's what they used to use and seven up on this alphabet. And then I have a quote from Eli Wiesel, the one, the winner of the Nobel Prize about immigration. Know that you must know that no human is illegal. And then Robert Kennedy, uh, his, he was re republishing his brother's book. John Kennedy wrote a book in 1960, no, 58. It was called The Nation of Immigrants. And then uh, Robert Kennedy decided to republish that book you know, uh, be, but that was the year he was murdered in 1968. But anyway, that's his quote about immigration. And so I, I started to uh, have this poster ready, and then I realized both my parents are immigrants. My mom's Mexican, my dad's Swedish. What a combination. 
Well, all the people say, well, don't you speak, didn't you learn Spanish when you were a kid? And I said, no, most of my parents could hardly learn, speak English, so they could, that's how I learned English, from hearing them talk to each other. Anyway, so that's a poster on immigration. And what, you know, when you keep hearing things in the uh, uh, words and stories in the news about how, you know, denigrating immigrants, so I thought I would add this element to it. Do you know, to bring more, uh, more interest and more thoughtfulness about uh, people. And the, uh, the other part, the way I used to, when I first started was doing stories. I liked this idea of multi-frame comics. I remember uh, one of the critics uh, that was, uh, when I was trying to get a gallery, they said, well, uh, this is like comic books. This is not art. Anyway, it was something I enjoyed doing. I liked telling the story in multi-frame. And then when I went to Europe, I went to look at uh, all the different places where they have multi-frame, like in the Louvre, they have the, the Egyptian tomb. They're, they had all kinds of art in churches that had multi-frame. They weren't like comic books, but they were, they were in multi-frame sto telling stories. So this shows an early, um, let me see. Uh, so this shows the early drawings. And then this shows how I started uh, watercoloring them and painting them. And so you can see uh, development. And then this is the finished work. But from uh, 1972 to 2017, it took a long time to get there. But I wanted the idea, I, f I felt that it's about peace, and it's, it has the humor in it, but the humor also has a, a, a lot of punchlines in, in it to make people aware of what's happening by using war as a way to c uh, resolve conflict. But I've done other ones besides this one, but this was one. And I like the quote from Eisenhower that's always spoken about that every... Uh, Warship launched is uh, is taking my, it's a theft from people that are hungry, and are not fed. And then I found another quote from Pope Francis. I try to bring Pope Francis in because I think he's uh, today one of the eloquent spokesmen. When people want to hear who is speaking with more clarity, I think you should. It's usually. The only one I can think of is Pope Francis t living today. And uh, this was one of the uh, uh, posters that I did on uh, the end of death penalty. So I went through different uh, stages. And uh, from 2000, this was uh, 2012. And then 2016, I, I, I really colored it and made it more updated. It had the uh, the date and the the proposition number, and so I used a quote from Pope Francis, and it was a, a way to kind of add an, uh, more uh, uh, more weight. Oh, one interesting thing: uh, when we first did it in 2012, uh, I I I thought, well, I'll do this poster, and maybe it'll inspire other artists to do it. But then uh, no, <laughs> no one else was doing it. I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll start it, and everyone else is going to say, oh, I can do better than, that, than what you're doing. <laughs> and so then no one else did. So then people started ordering these posters, all these groups and churches. One uh, sister in um, Riverside ordered 500, and she was giving them to all the deacons to use all around all the churches. And I sold, I sold them at cost, but it was exciting. And what happened is that the, usually the uh, vote is like, you know, very few people are against the death penalty and more people are for the death penalty. But because more uh, groups started to get involved and uh, using these posters, well, I, I shouldn't be trying to brag and say my posters helped way. So it was almost like 48 to, to 50, something, some very close number, which was unprecedented. And then this year, again, it was uh, 
it was very close, or not, let's see, 2016. But that's because the people that were for the death penalty really put a lot of money to get uh, everyone excited to push the death penalty for. So, but they, it was still very close. So, let's see. And, and that's, uh, that's it. Oh, um, I, the, but they take a long time, these posters, because I'm trying to look through old artwork and say what could be used. I, I mean, it's not like, uh, like, uh, like inspiration. It's like taking old and then recycling it and reimagining it. What could I do with this? You know, it's like kind of, um, what kind of word would I say uh, where you're over planning? <laughs> you know, you're, you're being too strategic and then you're trying to uh, make a statement. And so then I have to look and find words. I usually find the words and then I say, what can I put, what kind of image would I put in this? Anyway, so, but it's, they're not uh, usually very fast, but, any, but but people like them, and that's the exciting part. It's not that it's so beautiful. What it's more important is that it brings people uh, conscious that wouldn't be talking about these issues. And for me, uh, this is my chance. Well, I'm still going. <laughs> well, I still have gas in my tank. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, and I'm grateful. Uh, I would like to invite all the speakers and uh, Mr. Swanson take a seat. Why don't we go back here? Just a little yellow. <laughs> and let's have another speaker. I'm going to get you a mic. Thank you. My, my mic was all wet. My hands were perspiring. <laughs> Why should I be nervous in this crowd? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Swanson, for sharing with us. It's, it's such a treat to hear and see the ways that you have developed our process over m so many years, and um, to hear the stories and, and your ideas is really ins it's, they're really inspiring to us. And thank you to America, Sylvia, and Anthony. Um, so you all have work. Uh, with the posters for the exhibit, and uh, you're meeting Mrs. Swanson, the artist, for the first time, I believe, as like for all of you. And uh, so I'm very curious um, what questions you might have for the artist. So we're going to transition in this part of the program that I call Ask the Artist. <laughs> and um, so would any of you like to start? So I had a question about your medium, which you kind of answered during your talk. But um, is there a diff is there a difference to what medium you choose for different purposes, like crayon versus sprinting? Mm -hmm. or no, the, uh, uh, is that okay? I'll jump in. Uh, the crayon was just because I, that was how I began, and that those were old works, and I was just taking and recycling them. There was no purpose. I, I don't have a, a purpose when I, when, like I might get an old uh, silk screen. Uh, th th I did photo, some photo silk screens with Moybridge with the figures in motion. I don't know, some of you might know it. It's like before move film and they had m figures moving and the camera was taking each shot and I turned them into uh, serographs. And so no one's ever seen them. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna make a poster uh, I made one with Martin Luther King's quote on violence and nonviolence, and then another one with a quote from Corita, my teacher, that said, there's no rules about leaping into the new, for no one has been there before. And there's a figure jumping. You see the figure jumping over. Uh, and then um, I'm taking art from pieces that are real complex and then dropping them in uh, to make like the one that you that was chosen about the um, Mother Earth, and uh, it, it's all on. It, I'm using every trick in the trade, as they say. <laughs> I mean, not that, it, not that facile, but I'm 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 not restrained by any kind of technique. Um, for that poster specifically, were the bees added to it after the? B poster, or was the B poster an extension no, of No, the that? B poster's from another work. <laughs> <I think laughs> d 
it was a little <laughs> drawing, and then some people wanted to make a talk on bees, and uh, the, uh, the, a man that makes candles, and he wanted to talk about the plight of the bees and how important it is even in, in, in the liturgy, in the Catholic liturgy uh, for Easter, or Easter Saturday, the, the Saturday before Easter. Anyway, um, so I, I, decided, I told him, I'll make you a, a poster or an image, and I painted it, and I thought, well, uh, and then I just carried that, and then I took that image and dropped it in, because it's about Mother Earth. Like I have a, one of Sister Water, and it's from a, another artwork. You know, I keep borrowing it and reusing it, but you wouldn't be able to know it uh, because one was a miniature, and then I make it bigger and put words about water and taking care of water, especially after De Detroit and Flint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess one... I think for me, like a main sort of theme that I get from your artwork, it seems to be religion and, and spirituality. I, I know the first one had, was like Noah's Ark, and the picnic sort of made me think of like Last Supper sort of thing. How would you say like um, religion and spirituality influence your artwork? How... Oh, it started, look at, I, I started out, I had no background in art. When I, when I took the class in lettering, I thought, uh, you know, I'm just going to do lettering. These are going to be political posters. I'm going to make posters out of the, all these alphabets that I'm learning about. And so, uh, and the only uh, art that I really knew as a kid, I, I, we lived in a small town, but fortunately they had very good art. Uh, some interesting art. There, one of the ch churches that I went to had a, a beautiful uh, drawing of the crucifixion, but it was a large one. But it was a drawing, and it had one of uh, uh, wards. And then there was a, another church close by, a Mexican church that had a, a, a very flowery and elaborate. And the the artist had come and painted Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then another one, not too far, had the Stations of the Cross, and they had brought. Uh, Byzantine artists from the Vatican, uh, or artists from the Vatican that could do Byzantine art. And I used to work in a gas station, and sometimes I'd stop by a church, and it had two murals by these women, two women that uh, they're well known. They've built churches all over Los Angeles. And I used to go and look at them because they were so beautiful, and I could relate to them. And one was the um, raising of Lazarus, and the other was the uh, the loaves and the fishes. So art, the religious art seemed to be part of uh, what I, I understood as art uh, because it was going coming from things that I felt and things that I could share with others that are, were around me. Uh, but it wasn't that I wanted to do religious art. It was just part of who I was. But... Um, Thank you. I did libraries and operas <laughs> and orchestras, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. I think all in art, there's a lot of uh, the sacred is in all art. I, I don't know. I mean, we're, when we're being creative, it's it's part of a, like a spirituality, I think. Mm -hmm. it, making films, when you make your documentaries, there there's a spiritual element to it, I'm sure, because it's you. So one of the more unique features about your posters is that you include quotations, um, and you talked about this a little bit. But how do you um, how do you pick what words you want to use, or who inspires you, or what inspires you to pick the certain quotations that you do? Well, it, it can be from mo uh, like periodicals, or if it's a theme or like a subject, and then I'll start looking at it, like especially Laudati Si, which is the the uh, encyclical on the environment, and uh, that had wonderful quotes. In fact, one interesting thing, I went to give a talk at uh, Westwood uh, Presbyterian Church, and they said, we want you to give a talk on all your posters. And so then I, I was really excited. 
And so I had the, I had them all up, and I gave the talk, and then this, and then I said, I don't know why. I said, do you have any uh, comments or questions? And then this man raised his hand and he said, I didn't want to come to this talk. My wife forced my wife forced me to come over, and I was there. And I thought, oh gosh, what do I say? I said, your <laughs> wife must be really nice. I didn't know what to say, but I thought, well, I'll make a comment. But then he said, yeah, but I really liked it. This was great. I'm so glad I came over. And then I felt real good. And then I said, yeah, your wife is really wonderful. <laughs> but then uh, this man came over, because I was trying to explain Laudate Si, you know, the that's the encyclical. It means uh, uh, praise, uh, praise God for uh, for the earth. It's a, based on the uh, quote or the prayer, the canticle of St. Francis. Uh, anyway, um, he, he, this man came over and told me, well, you, we know about Laudate Si, because I was trying to explain what it was. And they said, we read it as a church. And I was so impressed because I, I know so many Catholics don't even know what it is. Uh, so, but so it, so I went to Laudate Si and I found really good quotes, quotes that would be universal. What I try to find in the in the writing, it, it isn't for any particular religion, but I want to reach a wider audience and see that we are, uh, how we can work together as, as one group of people, a common humanity rather than separate. Uh, as a child, I always felt like there was all this separation and people fighting o each other. And so today, I think it's a, a whole different uh, time now. We don't have much time to take care of things. So we have to work together. And that's why I got, uh, so I'm, I'm just choosing. I don't know, it, it's hard to tell. It's like sometimes you read something really beautiful and you know that's got to be in a picture. How has your background influenced your style and the messages that you want to get across to your audience? Well, as I told you, we didn't, I don't know anything about background because my dad left us and so he wasn't around too much and he was Swedish. So there was no, really not a community of Swedes where we lived. So he was by himself, he was kind of isolated. But my mom, because of being Mexican and she knew a lot of people and she knew English, and so she could do a lot. She was, uh, uh, I think the thing that, uh, that they w both of them told stories. And I think the storytelling in our, ch in the childhood is what influenced me, you know, the idea of telling a story. And I remember I couldn't read very well. And my mom said, and I was reading comic books. And she said, well, you've got to read something better. And so she bought, she started buying these classic comic books. And they were the great, uh, novels and great books of the, you know, the 19th century turned into like um, graphic novels. Uh, that were, They were graphic novels of the time. And then I started reading them and I started to really like them. So she got me to read a little bit deeper th level than Archie. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the style, I don't know if my background had a, a style. I'm, I'm sure they, it did, but I can't remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago, 80 years ago, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I'm curious uh, as to like what you're up to. Are you still continuing making these similar style posters or uh, what interests you now? Well, I still want to do the posters because, uh, as I say, uh, like the last one was I uh, called the um, Stop the Cl Violence of Climate Change. And I took an old artwork that I had done, the, one of the first pi pictures in its A Peaceable Kingdom. Oh, uh, um, Sylvia, could you run and grab your poster? No, I think it's uh, okay. Yeah, anyway, uh, but I'm still trying, but uh, there's a lot been going on. No, the other side. Yeah, yeah. Hold that up. Oh. It it was a a picture. It's a crayon painting. Later on, I uh, you could see it. I gave I gave them each their poster that they chose. 
as a gift. And also on the other side, my newest one, it's called the, the Violence of Climate Change. And it has a quote from an echo theologian named Thomas Berry, who died about eight years ago. And uh, thank you. Uh, well, I keep thinking, well, maybe I should give up and let the next generation take over and stop hogging the show. But uh, then I, I did another one. Um, if you look inside the, the exhibition, there's one of St. Francis looking into the water, and there's a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh that says, um, uh, go inside yourself and listen to the cry of the earth. And so then I put um, a picture of St. Francis looking into the pond of water, and, uh, and, and, and then I decided to make it as a larger work, and I went back and repainted it as a, as a more finished work. It was from 1985, the poster. And, I, I, well, I don't know what, how to answer. I, I think I try what I, I keep going, but I'm not sure how effective they are. As, they, as one gets older. That's great. <laughs> Amazing. Take over. <laughs> Take over with your uh, film. Oh, the other thing that influenced was more as I got older and I got to see more art. Uh, but then I started, and then also having someone like a teacher like Corita who told us there are no, um, there's, uh, there's no rules. It's uh, uh, you break every rule you can, and I, uh, oh, I can't remember the other one that she said. Uh, it was a really good one. Uh, everything, consider everything you do an experiment, and uh, there's no good or bad when you're doing your artwork. When you're being creative, it's it's all about work and doing the work. And so she empowered me as a person because I was afraid, of being dyslexic and having and left-handed, not unable to do very well in anything, and having someone open the door, and then I started going, and then it took a long time. Uh, it's 51 years, but it was like struggling from nothing to today. And um, so, but I think film and seeing things and, and meeting people that were creative and that opened doors and were doing something special it helped me a lot. Dance, uh, performance, uh, uh, plays, operas, uh, orchestras, everything. When you see the creative spirit moving people, it, it, it's what influenced me. And documentaries are very important in my life. So keep carry on with the documentaries. Well, you know what you related to us? Um, about what Carita said, that art is an experiment. There's no good or bad or right or wrong. And I wonder if it's kind of like, that's kind of deep. And I thought, about, well, this is kind of like life, she you know? But she didn't say there's no good or bad, but she said that it's when you're creating, it's it don't be trying to analyze it and say, is this good or is this bad? But it's, it's all about work. Uh -huh. And that's what I did is I threw all my heart into my work and did and worked as hard as I could. Thank you. That's very inspiring. Yeah, it told me to deep places just now. <laughs> um, any other questions before we open the floor? So you mentioned that you've been making these for a long time. And I was wondering, do you have a favorite poster that you've made? I like them all. But I, <laughs> but I like the one when they're topical. Like I like the one that, that says, build bridges, not walls. And then also, uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, I like the one called a spaceman, and I, uh, it, it's not on the, it's not, it wasn't selected. The man goes to outer space, uh, but we have one uh, after the, if anyone wants to see it, it's based on David Bowie's song, Space Oddity. Remember that song? It says ground control to Major Tom. Do you know that one? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a story. <laughs> It's a multi-frame, it's a story, but I use the quotes from the cosmonaut and the astronaut and saying, what a beautiful place this Earth is, but we must protect it, we cannot destroy it. You know, they're up in the space looking at the Earth, 
And so I thought that would be good. I mean, it wasn't like a quote from a theologian or anyone, but it was so profound today when you think of the, what we're doing to the earth that it was, it was very, it, to me, it seemed like it, it hit the message. I think you'll like it. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, now let's um, extend our conversation, and uh, we'd like to invite comments and questions from the audience to any of our speakers, or just... No comments thoughts. like that man that told me <laughs> he didn't... <laughs> Like that man that said, I didn't want to come to this talk. Okay. Okay. I'll bring the mic over. So I was trying to think um, of what your um, kind of cartoon, the kind of the, the sequence of images reminded me of, and it reminded me of m some Mexican muralists. And I wondered if you were influenced by that. I looked one up, because I went to Scripps College, and there's a mural there um, by a painter named Martinez. And it, it's the same idea. It's a sequence of paintings on the wall. And they, they look like to be a very similar sort of style of art. I was curious if you were influenced by any Mexican muralists. Yes, I, I, I love the Mexican muralists because they uh, dealt with a history of the people and, the, and their murals were accessible to people there in the public buildings. And when I did go to Mexico for an extended visit, I went to visit all the murals I could to see how they were. And I, I loved uh, Diego Rivera and Siqueiros. Uh, but they inspired me to want to do um, um, better work. Any other questions or comments? Are we always done? <laughs> like me, I'm, I'm very stunned. And, um, or are we just too hungry now? <laughs> okay, uh, well, thank you so much, um, everybody, for coming today. And let's thank our speakers again today. <laughs>I know many of you have already have a chance to look at the exhibition. I want to point out that if you would like to return and spend more time, you're free to do so. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And I'm going to keep the gallery open for a little while, too. So if you'd like to have food, enjoy a uh, conversation among yourself, and check it out again, uh, we are open. And uh, oh, just a friendly reminder, no food, no drink inside our gallery. <laughs> Always a librarian, I just had to say that. And um, thank you so much, everybody. Such a pleasure to be with you today. And thank you, everybody, for um, the presentation, the conversation. It's just so lovely to just be together today.